I will come into the presentation of this video, Power Systems Analysis under Load Flow. We're going to look at how to find the admittance bus matrix. Okay, so for example, given this load flow scenario, scenario where you've got uh, the first bus here called bus 1, on this bus we are connecting generator 1, which is G1, and uh, there is an admittance here, transmission line, of course, an admittance connecting to bus 2, as well as this bus 3 there. So this one, bus 1, bus 2, and bus 3, and you've got those admittances. An admittance between bus 1 and bus 2, we are calling it admittance 1, 2, or Y1, 2. The admittance between bus 2 and bus 3, we are calling it Y2, 3. And the admittance between bus 1 and bus 3, we are calling it Y1, 3. So if you've got those, coming up with a, uh, coming up with a bus admittance matrix, we basically have that. So for the diagonal matrices, or for the diagonal values, these are basically summation of all the admittances at a particular bus. For example, if you look at the first one there, so this is a summation of the admittances connected to bus 1. So when you look at bus 1 here, you add all the admittances which are just connected to bus 1. That's where you have this one. This one here is summation of all the admittances connected to bus 2. So at bus 2 here, summation of all the admittances connected there, you've got this one, and you've got that one there. And then this one here is a summation of all the admittances connected at bus 3. So if this is our bus 3, the admittances connected there, you've got this one, and that one, the summation, you have that. And then for the first row, of course, this, after feeding the diagonals, this one now will be now other admittances now. So for example, if you look at bus 1, you start with the summation of buses, uh, admittances connected at bus 1, which are those, and then you have this one, the admittance between bus 1 and bus 2. That's the one you put there. And again, at 1, we've got another admittance. We've got the admittance between 1 and 3, which is that one there. Same applies there. Once you find the summations there at 2, then you find this, is that admittance there, and that one there. These are the ones we are calling 2, 1, and 2, 3. Same applies for that one. After finding the summations, then you carry these, this one, 1, 3, and the 2, 3. Those are the ones you have there. So for us to remember, we are going to be using these. So for the first row, you'll be calling them 11, 12, 13. For example, if it's a 3 by 3 matrix. Second row, you get 21, 22, 23. Third row, 31, 32, 33. If it was a 4 by 4 matrix, the fourth one would be 41, 42, 43, like that. 5 by 5 matrix, the fifth one would be 51, 52, 53. Yeah, going just like that. So this will just be helping us to remember. So these are summations, and then those are the other admittances connected to that bus, but they should be negative. So the only one which is purely positive is those summations. Let's look at an example. So this one is that. So as an example here, they're saying, given the Y bus model below, determine the uh, Y bus matrix. So we've got three buses, bus one, bus two, and bus three, and their admittance is there. We've got four ohms, 10 ohms, as well as five ohms like that. So for us to come up with the bus matrix, just like I explained earlier, to come up with this formula since the form the the load flow scenario here is a three by three so our matrix will be a three by three it's got three buses so it will produce a three by three matrix so for the first row of course it's 11 12 13 second 21 22 23 third 31 32 33 which are those and of course these which are not in the diagonal will be negative like that so with that you come with y11 this is a summation of all the admittances connected at bus one so if you look at bus one here how many admittances are connected there? You've got this one and that one. So add them. When you add 4 plus 10, you have 14. That's the 14 you have there. When you come to uh, the other admittances now connected, because we are just at bus 1. So you've got this one, which is connected. You write it alone. So that is the 12 there. You write it, it's a 4, but it's negative. You write it as 4. And you've got another one here, 10. It will be negative just like that you go to the second row. So for the second row, it's the same thing. For the diagonal matrix, summation of all the admittances connected at that bus. So at bus two, 
So at bus two, summation of all the buses connected at bus, all the admittances connected at bus two, you've got the four and the five. When you add them, you have nine. That's the nine you have there. For the other one, we had two. The 21 here is the admittance between bus two and one. Bus two and one, the admittance there is the four. That's the one you have there. It should be negative, of course. And the other one, 23 or 23, is between two and three, which is five, but it should be negative. That's the one we are having there. And then we go to the last one. For the third bus, the diagonal one, which is Y33, this is a summation of all the buses connected at bus 3. So this all the admittances connected at bus 3. When you add this and this, you're going to have 15. That's the one you have there down. And then for these, 31, it's the admittance between bus 3 and 1. Bus 3 and 1, we are going to have 10, but it's negative, which is that one. And the 32, it's the admittance between 3 and 2. 3 is this one, 2 is there, the admittance there is 2, it's negative, you are going to have that. So this is how we basically come up with an AY bus matrix. Thanks for watching.